What's up, people? It's Chris Angel coming at you. So we need to um, we need to do some more unhappiness conversations only in the spirit of uh, uh, well, what's what's unfolding in life. So, um, well, I'm not exactly sure where to start. So let me just try to get this out for you. I'm I'm full of fire right now. I'm full of fire. I am fired up. So let me see if I can get through this and translate some of this fire for you. So if you guys have followed my, uh, what's up, Joe? If you guys have followed any of my unhappiness series, this is part six, and and you should go back through my timeline and look at the different unhappiness messages. But here's what I want to tell you. In What's interesting to me, in the spirit of declaring the breakdown, right? When you declare the breakdown, which is what I did in parts one through five of unhappiness. And as I did that, I did not have, I was not in the presence of a breakthrough. So if you go back and look at unhappiness part one through five, I was not at that time, and that was not that long ago, in the presence of a breakthrough. I was simply coming to you to share what I was noticing in my breakdown, okay? Okay, so that being said, what has happened since then is um, in some ways magical, right? Like there was some, There is something bigger than me that is happening, and I think some of it is in response to just the openness um, or the declaration of me having a breakdown. I think there's something when you start to declare your own breakdown, you start to get real, you stop pretending that things are fine, and you start to be honest about what's working and, and moreover not working in your life. And I think as you do that, you start to move out of the pretense you've been living in and into a space of being open for what's next. So let me say this. Number one, what I've experienced, I can't, this is not like in a book. I'm just telling you what I've experienced. What I've experienced is that from the place of having declared my breakdown in episodes one through four and in, in, you know, parts one through five, um, I have, I've now come out the other side and stuff... Let me say this, stuff in business, this is spurred on a lot by what's happening in business. My marketing agency is exploding right now and it's, um, I've never experienced anything like this before. And and I can't say that it's because of hustle and grind. There's stuff that's happening that that I can't explain. And so there is this interesting and um, humbling partnership with the universe, right? There's this, when you stop trying to control things, and I think this is interesting because I think part of unhappiness comes from trying to control stuff. In my mind, I'm a visionary person, so in my mind, I have a vision for something. And in that vision, I go to try and make that vision happen. And in making that vision happen, there's a lot of things that I do to try to force, cajole, like manipulate, grind to the, to the, to the vision that I see. And the more I try to control it and force it, the more frustrated I get, right? In, in that every time I try to, and I did, listen, this has happened for most of my adult life in business. I've tried to force the result because I'm only now, only now am I learning how to partner with the universe. Only now am I learning how to surrender to something bigger than myself. And the reason we don't surrender, listen to this. I'm telling you this to you because I'm fresh on it, right? The reason we don't surrender is because we're afraid we won't control it. The minute you surrender, you're taking, it's not that you're giving up responsibility, right? But you are, you are being open to other things that you can't see. This is the definition of faith, right? Faith is being certain of things hoped for and, uh, right. And, and, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, you know, the, you know, the Bible verse, right? But it's, you're being, faith is being certain of things unseen, right? And, and it's interesting that, um, it's been a long time. It's probably been since my early 20s that I've been certain of things unseen. And in business in particular, what's interesting is that being certain of, of, seeing, of, of, of things unseen is not, is not popular advice. Like you don't go to a, a marketing class. You don't go to a business planning class and they're like, okay, guys, here's your business plan. Like write down some stuff and now go be uncertain of the things you wrote down, right? Or be certain of the things that you can't see yet of how to get there. No, business planning is, and, and entrepreneurship is like, have a target, create the plan, execute the plan, and off you go. Now, I've spent most of my adult life in that mindset. And the, the, the difficult part of that mindset for me has been, as I've gone out trying to produce the result and the result doesn't happen, 
I just start building this archive of evidence of how I'm not measuring up, how I'm not, how I'm not getting there, how it's not working. And so at some point you start to come to your, your wits end. You're like, well, if I've I feel like I've tried everything. None of this is working. So is it me? Like, am I missed my calling? Like, what's the deal? And I think, I think the, I think the uh, accumulation of that disappointment starts to lead to unhappiness, right? And so on this side of the breakthrough, Right? I would say like, so I had a breakdown and I'm, I'm experiencing, experiencing a breakthrough in results, but I'm also experiencing a, a breakthrough in surrender. And I think some, and I think, I, maybe not some, I think a lot of those results are coming from the fact that I have surrendered. There is a quote um, from Abraham Hicks that says, um, you know, all, like when you have a wish, when you have a desire and you, and you, and you put that out into the, the universe, right? that all cooperating components are working together to, to bring you what it is you've asked for, right? This is, this is law of attraction 101. Like you have something that you desire and out goes that frequency. And, and now, right? Now things start to happen. And the continuation of that quote is all, all cooperating components are, are arranging themselves to give you what you want, but you, you, are the uncooperative component. So while the rest of the world and universe is trying to organize itself to give you what it is that you want, you are the uncooperative component. I, for, for decades, was the uncooperative component. How? Because I was trying to force the result rather than surrendering to the process. And this is very hard to take in. This is very hard uh, for uh, I, I would say it's hard for most people. I want to say it's hard for entrepreneurs. I want to say it's hard for people who um, are strong-willed. It's hard for people who, it's, it's, it's just hard for everybody because surrender requires an evolution of your soul. Surrender requires that you start to see there's something bigger than you happening and that it is possible that the universe is wanting to partner with you. You have to be able to see that to surrender. If you don't see that, then you won't surrender, right? You'll try to control. And if you try to control, then you are the uncooperative component in manifesting what it is you said you wanted, right? So I am telling you on this side of the breakthrough that, and I, I, listen, I've listened for this. I've, I, I've, been, I've been like, I've been searching. Is my happiness, is my contentment, is my joy in this moment? Because I'm having success in business and what would happen and if it is and what would happen if the success went away, would I still have joy? Would I still be happy? Because parts one through five were all about like unhappiness parts one through five were all about, right? How do I start to feel the contentment from, how do I start to feel the contentment in life regardless of my circumstance? That's the kind of happiness that I want. I don't want happiness given by circumstance because that's, that's fleeting, that's temporary. And I think what I'm coming to is that I would be okay if it all went away. I could remain in a place of contentment and joy if it all went away because I realized that, here's, oh, watch this, okay, here's the really weird part. Um, I'm not the one that's produced the result. I think when you, when you think that you're the one who produced the result and the result goes away, then you're like, look at all that I've lost. Look at all that I've lost. Look at all that I built and now it's all gone. But when you realize that you are a part of a bigger picture, when you are in, in partnership with the universe, when you're in partnership with your vision, and you realize that you are not the driving force. You are the, you are the source. You, are, you, get, you gave the intention. You held the space for your vision to show up. But beyond that, you surrendered to, to the unfolding. Ooh, you should write that down. You surrendered to the unfolding. Then if it goes away, okay, you know how to 
submit and surrender to the unfolding again. It takes all the pressure off. And I think part of the unhappiness comes from the pressure we put on ourselves to produce a result. I think that's an epidemic in entrepreneurship. I think there are so many entrepreneurs with ulcers and all sorts of uh, stress and chaos in their life because self-induced stress and chaos because they are trying to control an outcome. And when you surrender to the unfolding of your vision, it happens a lot easier. Like, like, six, like I can't explain to you in the last 60 days, 90 days, what has unfolded. I can't explain to you the people who have come into my life, the results we've produced, the, uh, the, con the, the contribution and impact we're creating in the world. It's, it's mind-blowing. And it's humbling. And, it's, and it, 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 if I can get really still for a minute, it brings a tear to my eye in terms of what it is that's happening. So I share this with you because there are a lot of people who are putting up with and surviving unhappiness. You're in the middle of grind and hustle. Grind and hustle. You wish there were a different way it could be. You think there should be an easier way that it should be. You've, you've watched The Secret. You've read the book. You, you've listened to Law of Attraction stuff. You're like, yeah, I mean, I kind of did it, but I kind of... Like, you're just lost in this place of like, how does it all fit? And what I'm telling you is that on the other side of you surrendering to the unfolding of your vision, magical things start to happen. And you realize that it's not on your own volition, your own will. This, maybe this is what it means by... Not my will, but yours be done, right? Maybe this is what that means. It's not that you don't have something to contribute. It's not that you don't have uh, good intentions, but that not my will doesn't mean not my desire, right? Because in fact, what I'm experiencing right now has come from my desire. It's come from my soul. This is my soul's work that I'm in the middle of. This is my life's work that I'm in the middle of. So it is my will in some instances, right? It's my desire. But beyond that, it is not my will, but it is the will of something bigger that is taking over and, and I get to be inside of it. And in that space, in that partnership, unhappiness kind of melts away, right? And I get to enjoy the pleasure and the company of a partner in the universe, in God, in, in, in my higher self. How do you want to frame that, right? So, I'm just, I am, um, clearly you can tell I'm a little on fire today, but I'm just super present uh, today from um, what's unfolding, right? We have a, in, in our marketing agency, um, in the last 30 days, uh, a gentleman, his name's Andre Henry. You guys can check him out, Andre R. Henry. You can, he's on Instagram and, and Facebook, and his mission is to end racism, right? And he's, he's hired our company to help him broadcast his message to the world. And today, he did his first two interviews for his show, his upcoming show, right? His, his show is going to be called, It Doesn't Have to Be This Way. And here's the thing about, right? Here's the thing about this, the magic of this, right? Like I watch his episodes and, and I'm, I'm um, stunned by the impact this message will have in the world about ending racism. And he does it in such an in, intelligent, eloquent, and constructive way to, to facilitate this conversation for the rest of us who also believe we should, uh, who also share the, the idea that, racism should end, right? How magical is that? That there is somebody who, who I could not, you know how he found us? He found us on Instagram. I was doing Instagram posts. How many Instagram posts have you done and somebody reaches out to you who wants to end racism and hires your company? It's, it's magical. And I want to, let me say this. Ooh, just keep coming. Keep coming through me. This is good. So listen, the thing about this is when you, there are many, this is what I did for decades. So this is also part of the unhappiness is when your message doesn't fit your soul, right? For decades, my message was trying to play with the, you know, my background's real estate. So for, for, for decades, my message was trying to see how real estate as a marketing message fit inside of what my soul really wanted to do in the world. And it never fit. It just always felt too small for what I was trying to convey and the change I was trying to make. And unhappiness will come. Unhappiness will come when you are trying to go put yourself out in the world in a message that doesn't fit your soul. 
This is at the heart of my company, Groundswell. At the heart of what we're doing is helping you unlock and find your important work, your important message. And when you find that, right, when you find your important work and your important message, and you surrender to the unfolding of that important work and that important message, then and only then, in alignment with your soul, right, and the universe, does, does magic start to happen? And, and unhappiness begins to fade away. So this is, this is I, listen, I'm just coming to you real time in, in, in putting thoughts together about how, how unhappiness and happiness works. And what I, at, least, at least what I'm finding in my life journey, in my experience. My hope, my hope is that in this six-part series of unhappiness, because I'm pretty clear this is the end of this series, right? I'm, I am flying high right now in, in what I'm learning and understanding about happiness and unhappiness. Is My hope in sharing this is that you not only can have unhappiness melt away, right? Look, and I don't care anywhere in your life there's unhappiness. You might say 90% of my life is happy and 10% over here is unhappy. Perfect. Go look at that 10% and be like, how... How can I surrender to the unfolding of what's happening in this 10% of my life so that unhappiness fades away and I, and I move myself into alignment with my soul and the universe in this area of my life? My hope in sharing this with you, right, my journey with you is that you begin to embrace the unfolding of your important work, what's next for you, and that you would be present to how it feels to be constrained by a message that doesn't fit to be constrained by an approach to work that, that feels forced, like when you're trying to hustle and grind, and that you would begin to play with surrender. Begin to play with, just listen, here's, let's make this actionable. Here's how, you can, here's how you can walk away from this conversation right now, okay? You can just ask the question without any fear of, the, the answer, right? The question would be, what's next for me? Or you could ask the question, what does my soul really want to do? And you don't have to have the answer. That's part of the surrender, right? When you surrender to the unfolding, you can ask the question without the answer. If you, if you feel like you have to answer, then you're, you're putting yourself back into a position of trying to control the whole heart of surrender is that you can ask the question and wait for the answer. So this is how I want you to leave. Go look at the areas in life where you're unhappy, okay? Or where you want where you want change and ask, what is next for me here? And then just it might not take it might take a day, it might take a week, it could take an entire year. For me, in many ways, it took decades. Right? Because I would ask the question and then I would I would not wait for the answer. I tried to control the answer and the outcome. And I just had, I don't know, maybe I'm thicker than most. And it just took me a while to figure that out in life school. So let my learning lesson save you some time. But just ask the question, not from your head, but from your gut, from your heart, somewhere down in here in your body, right? In your torso, like down here in your body, start to, start to wait for and feel for the answer. Okay, I feel complete. That feels complete, gang. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with me. Uh, if you have not seen parts one through five, it would be interesting for you to go back through those. And if you have comments to comment on those, just go back to my personal profile here. And you'll have to scroll, right? You can't search for it. You just have to scroll and go find unhappiness part one, unhappiness part two, blah, blah, blah. And off you go. So here's to you and all of your important work and what you're really here to do in the world. Um, if you guys have interest in the kind of work we're doing at our marketing agency, you can feel free to private message me. Um, you don't have to know exactly what your what your important work is. You just have to know that you're ready for it and you want to put it out in the world and we can help you extract what that really is. So if that's inter interesting to you, you can private message me um, and, jo and join, join the Groundswell. Take care, gang. See ya.